The ion distribution across a membrane determines the membrane potential. Sodium, potassium, calcium, and chloride are a few of the ions involved. Cell membranes have channels that allow the ions to cross down their concentration gradients as well as exchange pumps to move their ions against their concentration gradients. These are all things that can be affected pharmacologically to alter depolarization and conduction of action potentials in the heart. Cardiac action potentials are similar to action potentials that occur in neurons with the exception of this plateau. The rapid depolarization is similar, but instead of immediately repolarizing to baseline, the cardiac cell maintains the positive membrane potential for almost 200 milliseconds. A whole neuron action potential lasts for less than 5 milliseconds before repolarizing again. As with a neuron, the depolarization is due to an opening of sodium voltage-gated channels. This allows sodium to rapidly enter the cell, making the cardiac cell more and more positive. Sodium channels close completely and are locked in a re refractory position once the membrane reaches plus 30 millivolts. Once the membrane potential reaches plus 30 millivolts, calcium voltage-gated channels open up, allowing calcium to enter the cell. This does not make the cell more positive because at the same time, potassium voltage-gated channels open, allowing potassium to exit. Therefore, there is a balance in the positive ions in and the positive ions out so that the membrane potential remains constant. This will last until the calcium channels will close. This prolongation of the action potential has a very important purpose. It prevents cardiac muscles from sustaining a contraction. We need our heart muscle to contract and then relax. That's the important part. Not to stay contracted like our skeletal muscles are when we want to hold a glass of milk steady. Heart muscles must relax. By sustaining the action potential for over 200 milliseconds, you eliminate the ability for a follow-up action potential to come along too soon to stimulate the muscle again before it has a chance to relax. Repolarization, or return to resting membrane potential, is achieved by closing the calcium channels to stop the influx of calcium and opening of more or different potassium channels as potassium exit the cell, the membrane potential becomes more and more negative until it reaches around minus 90 millivolts. It is at this point the exchange mechanism and the pumps for sodium, potassium, and calcium re-establish the concentration gradients so another action potential can occur for a subsequent beat. Sodium has a primary role in the depolarization of the pacemaker cells. The leakier the cell is, the sooner the cell can develop an action potential. A drug that is a sodium channel blocker will cause the heart rate to slow down because it makes it harder for sodium to leak into the cell and start a new action potential. It's great for slowing down tachycardia. Calcium not only is the reason the action potential is maintained for so long, but it contributes to the contractile activity of the cardiac cell. Drugs that are calcium channel agonists, which promote their opening, will increase the force of contraction. In contrast, calcium channel blockers will reduce the force of contraction and can be used to treat people with high blood pressure by making the heart contract a little less forcefully so the blood pressure doesn't go up so much. Potassium is critical in getting the membrane potential back to negative values by letting the positive ion potassium out of the cell. Drugs that are potassium cell channel blockers will make it harder for a potassium to leave the cell so it will prolong the repolarization phase making the cell take longer to achieve resting membrane potential. This type of drug is used to prevent atrial arrhythmias and to slow down the heart rate.